How are US foreign policy decisions made? Well, it turns out that's a pretty complicated question. Historians for a long time have viewed decision makers as rational beings who act in the best interest of the state. Until very recently, historians did not look at how cultural factors such as race, gender, and personal relationships could affect decision makers' worldviews, and how those worldviews, in turn, could affect the types of decisions they made. To investigate this question, I looked at Theodore Roosevelt's second term in office and his policies in Latin America. At the time, there were two main actors. On the one hand, there was President Roosevelt himself, of course. Roosevelt had a rather manly and confrontational style to foreign relations. As you can see in this political cartoon, he is carrying his classic big stick and he's towing around the nations of Latin America, as any good military man would do. On the other hand, was the Secretary of State and Hamilton College's very own Elihu Root. Root was both a lawyer and a dude. Now, in the 20th century, a dude was an elite man from the Northeast who preferred arbitration to fighting. These characteristics gave Root a diplomatic and international law-based approach to foreign relations. As you can see, these men had radically different approaches to foreign relations. So how did they manage to create policy and get along so well, when these days it seems all but impossible? Well, first, I actually want us to take a step back and recognize the difference between an image and reality. While yes, Roosevelt did carry a big stick, he was also an intellectual who wrote 47 books. So understanding that these two men are highly complex, I decided to look at their personal relationship and how that affected the types of decisions they made in the back room on Latin America. And what I found by reading their private letters was that they tempered each other's radically different styles. They both valued world peace, and so they would listen to each other and have constant discourse rather than constantly arguing. They came together and found compromise. And I think policymakers today could all take this lesson from these two men about how to work with someone with whom you disagree on approach. Thank you.